Good evening. I am Ron Height, president of the ETSU Alumni Association. It's my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you here this evening. This event has a lot of history. It dates back to 1929 when diplomats, as graduates were called in those days, had a candlelight ceremony to uh, celebrate the graduation of that year. And I understand from Dan Mahoney that it was a great ceremony. <laughs> right, Dan? We, uh, we also have a unique history of the Alumni Association. Our organization dates back to 1915 and is the university's first and longest serving organization of graduates and former students to support the university since 1915. We welcome every one of you tonight. We appreciate all the support that you give to our university. This is a great crowd. I've been to numerous of these over the years, and I think this is one of the best crowds we've ever had. So thank you all very much. This is a busy week for the university. We have a lot of things going on. Uh, Dr. Nolan will join us uh, later. I think he's over at a nurse pinning ceremony, but he will be here shortly. And also, we have graduation commencement exercises this weekend where 1,792 students will receive their diplomas. Now think back to when we were here as students, how many were going through that line? And how many hands that Dr. Nolan and his staff are going to have to shake over the weekend? So they're going to have some sore hands next week. We wish each and every one of these graduates our congratulations, Godspeed, and their new career or continuing their career and we ask and we hope that they will carry this university's legacy with them wherever they go uh, around the world in their next career. The main purpose of this evening is to recognize nine outstanding individuals. These individuals are not only outstanding in their profession but they're also outstanding in their personal life and the commitments they made to other individuals and to other institutions. And we're so proud to be able to take the time this evening to present them awards in uh, honor of their service to the university, their service to the nation, service to their communities. As this weekend celebrates the end of the academic year, we celebrate the graduating class of 2013, but we also celebrate the 50-year reunion of the class of 1963, and they were inducted this morning into the Golden 50s Club. And we're pleased that several members of this class of 1963 have joined us tonight uh, for the evening's festivities. At this time, I would ask uh, Caroline Baird to please come forward. He's our newly elected Student Government Association Vice President if she would come forward and present the invocation. Caroline. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, how blessed we all are to be able to come together and celebrate the accomplishments of our alumni, and how blessed we are to be able to call ETSU our home. Please continue to keep everyone safe as they travel today and through the weekend, and please put your arms around this university as we prepare to graduate our newest set of alumni. And these things we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you, Caroline. Caroline is an English major from Rogersville, Tennessee. Uh, Jimmy Jenkins' uh, home turf down there. And now I'll be followed by Bob Plummer, who's going to make some administrative announcements uh, before we begin our dinner. Thank you. Thank you, General Height. And thank you for getting us underway. And uh, most fitting having a general launch the dinner, isn't it? I'm starting to take orders naturally now. I don't know if I can keep up to Army standards or not, but he's uh, trying to whip me into shape. While you enjoy this uh, evening's dinner, uh, we hope you'll enjoy the music provided to you by Dr. Sharon Nelson Rush. Dr. Rush has earned three degrees at ETSU, having received a Bachelor's of Music Education in 1982, a Master of Arts in Teaching in 1983, and a Doctorate of Education in 1992. Currently she is the choir director for Jonesboro United Methodist Church and music instructor at Kate's Music Center 
as well as director of the Music Academy of Jonesboro. She is assisted by Mrs. Beverly Ferguson, a 1993 ETSU alumna and local piano teacher. Now, the general's been accustomed to giving <coughs> orders, uh, but uh, we have to note one thing for him. You know, he's had a good reign as president of the Alumni Association, and uh, he's uh, crossing a significant uh, date and time today as well. It's his birthday. So, uh, Dan Mahoney, if you would like to get even, <laughs> I mean, excuse me, if you would like to lead us. I'm sure there'll be retribution later. I really don't like Guantanamo, okay? Just one comment. Older than my land, the sweeter it is. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, I would encourage you to relax, enjoy the company of your friends, family, and guests. We hope you'll enjoy tonight's meal prepared under the watchful eye of executive chef Jean-Claude Saruga and the wonderful hospitality provided by our Millennium Center partners. Please continue your salad as, as you eat your meal, and we'll give you a little warning before we launch into the program. Thank you again for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you could please uh, be seated. We will continue our program. If you haven't finished your meal, please continue eating. That cake is delicious. But before continuing, I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce the first family of East Tennessee State University, Dr. Brian Nolan and his beautiful wife, Donna. Give him a hand. This, this fellow has more energy than a pen full of ever-ready bunnies, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, tonight, with uh, great ETSU pride, we gather at this very special time to pay tribute to successful lives, reflect on hard work and accomplishments. I ask now that you join me in recognizing those alumni who are celebrating their graduation anniversaries and who have carried the ETSU name with them throughout their careers, through all parts of the world. We have with us reunion groups who are celebrating their 50th class reunion, class of 1963, and those who are celebrating more than 50 years. Today, these groups have had the opportunity to tour the campus, uh, renew long-standing friendships with their classmates, and see all the great things that are happening here at ETSU. We recognize members of those groups for their ties to the place that they started their pursuit of their degrees. Celebrating their 50th class reunion are members of the class of 1963. These alumni were inducted into the Golden 50s Club this morning and will lead the members of the class of 2013 for the presentations of their diplomas tomorrow. One other group with us tonight is the Golden 50s Club. Those alumni who graduated in 1962 or before. At this time, I would ask all of these alumni from both these groups to please stand as we offer our applause. Please stand. What a great group. Congratulations to all of them. Now I'm honored to introduce the person who is bringing new leadership, vision, and direction to our beloved university. And I'm very honored to introduce the ninth president of East Tennessee State University, Dr. Brian Nolan. Thank you. Thank you to everyone and good evening. 
On behalf of our more than 2,200 faculty and staff and 15,500 students, I want to welcome you back to your alma mater. I want to welcome you home to ETSU. Today has been a day in which excitement defines the hour. From the beginning of the day to now at the close of the day, we have as a university celebrated our success, celebrated the achievements of our students, and now tonight we celebrate the accomplishments of the outstanding members of the ETSU family. I had the distinct privilege today of welcoming into your ranks as alumni students who graduated from the Bill Gatton College of Pharmacy and students who graduated from the Quillen College of Medicine. And earlier this evening, participated in a pinning ceremony for students in our College of Nursing, which is, by the way, the largest college of nursing in the state of Tennessee with a 95% pass rate on the NCLEX. Today is also a day that began with a commemoration of the Golden 50s. So from beginning to end, today is a day in which we as an ETSU family came together to celebrate the accomplishments of our students and to celebrate the success of our alumni. Tonight we're going to recognize individuals who have made countless contributions to this institution. Our recipients include a woman who is an esteemed leader in higher education, a man who has risen to the highest ranks of professional football, the mayor of one of our most progressive and visited counties, an Olympian and an international sports figure, an individual who has truly transformed the arts, not only through this region, but at our institution, a distinguished member of the Tennessee Board of Regents, a lifelong buccaneer who's led an impressive career in the Tennessee legislature, and a civic leader from Tennessee's oldest town and a lawyer supporter of ETSU, and finally, a woman who is among the most recognized writers in motorsports history. You'll learn more about those individuals tonight, but look at the spread from professional football coach, to esteemed educator, to philanthropist, to public servant. All of those define who we are as a university. This time last year, I stood before you and announced that we would begin a visioning process across this institution in which we as a community look collectively towards our 125th anniversary. We had just celebrated our centennial, and as we had in 1986 with turning towards 2011, we began as an institution, as faculty, staff, students, as a region, to look towards our 125th anniversary and to dream collectively of our aspirations for an institution. Under the leadership of Mr. Louis Gump, we have asked big questions. We've asked what if. Those what if questions have defined us historically as an institution. And as many of you have heard me talk about in the past, those what-if questions have made us who we are as an institution. More than 40 years ago, we asked the question, what if there was a college of medicine in Johnson City? Folks in Knoxville jumped up and down and said, no way. But what do we have now? The Quillen College of Medicine, which is ranked number three in the country for rural and family practice. In the early 2000s, we asked, what if there was a college of pharmacy at ETSU? Once again, people from across the state said, that's an outlandish proposition. Now today, we graduated the fourth class of students from the Bill Gatton College of Pharmacy. We asked those what if questions throughout the 125 process. Those questions will push us. Those questions will make us not only better as an institution, but better as a region. I encourage each of you to visit the website, www.etsu.125, and give us your hopes and visions for this university. Later this summer, we will release the final draft of the report, and at our faculty convocation, we will come together as a university to implement the recommendations of the plan. One of the recurring themes that has emerged throughout this process is that ETSU is a hidden gem. I think we're more than a hidden gem. I think we're a world-class university. And not only is that my opinion, but it's the opinion of individuals across the region. Part of the 125 process was we conducted polling of students, prospective students, high school counselors, parents, employers, all across the state of Tennessee. And I want to share with you some of their comments about your institution. The comments are as follows, and I quote, the campus community is like a family. The campus is the most beautiful public institution in the state of Tennessee, and it's a campus that attracts people to ETSU. 
Our students stated that they are drawn to ETSU because of our affordability and the friendliness of the individuals who comprise our family. Our Honors College was cited as one of the best in the state and on par with the best in the nation. In fact, when you ask parents who they would compare us to as an institution, they compared us to places like North Carolina, the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, Vanderbilt. So the perception of prospective parents of students who will come to ETSU puts us on par with the best. And other respondents noted that ETSU offers private college benefits and public institution access. I firmly believe that we're an institution ready to make great strides. There are beautiful things that happen across this campus every day of the week. And over the course of the past five months, as I've had the opportunity to tell the stories of our faculty and staff, as I've met with groups, I kind of engage in this back and forth of did you know? So if you'll bear with me, I'd like to share some did you knows about your alma mater. Did you know that the concept and technology behind Surgical Chloe, the world's first full body high fidelity surgical simulator that is an anatomical facsimile of a human woman was developed and created here at ETSU? Did you know that the enrollment of veterans at ETSU has risen by 300% during the past decade? And we've launched a new program called Buck Hero that will provide additional scholarship support for out-of-state veterans, essentially allowing out-of-state veterans to come to college at ETSU at no charge. Did you know that our ROTC program was recognized as one of the best ROTC programs in the country, one of the top eight? We competed in regional championships, defeating schools from little old schools, little old places like Knoxville, University of Kentucky, The Ohio State University, small schools. We ran circles around them, and I had the opportunity to travel to West Point with our cadets and watch them compete against the best in the world holding their own. Did you know that the university school, the university school was recently rated as one of the best high schools in the state of Tennessee, the best high school in East Tennessee, and was ranked 12th across the state. Did you know that we have a U.S. Olympic training facility for weightlifting at ETSU, led by a former Olympian, and that we are one of only two centers in the country for weightlifting? Did you know that one of our faculty members, Chris Dula, made the list of the top 25 highest rated professors nationally on a website called RateMyProfessor.com. And did you know later this summer, Dr. Dool and I will have a radio show on WETS. We've yet to determine the name, but I can tell you the content will, will involve uh, blasts from the past from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Dr. Dool is a wonderful faculty member, a faculty member who provides the spark of knowledge on a daily basis. And for the students in the room, if you've not had the opportunity to take a class with Dr. Dool, I'd encourage you to do so quickly. Did you know that another faculty member, Dr. Ted Olson, has been nominated for a Grammy Award each of the past two years? And did you know that today, our tennis team, under the leadership of Coach Yasu Zatini, for the seventh year in a row, is competing in the NCAA championships? I could go on for hours about the great things that happen at your alma mater. But one of the things that I'm most proud of is how the arts have influenced not only our institution, but the region over the past 100 years. Impacts ranging from music to theater to dance to film to poetry to storytelling to digital media. The enhancements of the arts at ETSU through the creation of a performing arts center is a dream shared across the region. In fact, it is a dream that was identified more than a quarter century ago when we began the process of preparing for our centennial. We now have the opportunity to move that dream forward as the Tennessee Board of Regents and Governor Bill Haslam have authorized the planning process. Over the course of the next year, we will engage in a full force effort to raise funding for the facility. It is our goal through the Arts Initiative to raise funding to build a fine and performing arts center, fine and performing arts classroom, fine and performing arts home for ETSU. Hopefully that facility will be located within a stone's throw of our current location and that facility will provide an opportunity for us to showcase not only the talents of our students, but to bring the community together to celebrate the arts at ETSU. I'd like to thank Dr. Paul Stanton for his continued service to ETSU as he chairs the Arts Initiative. Please take a moment while you're here to visit the table staff by our advancement team and learn about our recently launched Now Seating campaign. This initiative provides each of us with the opportunity to make the arts initiative our own by naming a seat in one of the auditoriums or concert halls 
in the memory of a loved one, special friend, or mentor. Once again, I want to thank you for all that you do for your ETSU. I want to thank you for the time that you share with us tonight and in the months to come. Take time to visit campus. Take time to walk across this campus. Take a mental snapshot of it and then come back in the fall because things are going to look a little bit different in the fall than they do today. By the fall, we hopefully, knock on wood, will be members of a new athletic conference. By the fall, hopefully, knock on wood, if it doesn't rain, the parking garage will be open, the green space will be complete, we'll have a Taco Bell uh, in the Culp Center, and we'll have a brand new bookstore. It's going to be a busy summer on campus, so take a snapshot tomorrow, because after tomorrow, things will never again look the same. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for all that you do for this university. Have a great evening, and most importantly, go box. Thank you, Dr. Nolan. Uh, Dr. Nolan mentioned the uh, competition the ROTC did up at West Point. I will tell you, uh, as he went up to participate with the cadets, it made the lasting impression on that group of uh, Ranger cadets. And I don't think any other university professor has ever attended that function. So, uh, Dr. Nolan, on behalf of all of us military, we really appreciate that. Thank you. Now we're going to uh, offer our appreciation to three members of the Alumni Association Board of Directors whose terms are expiring this year. Ms. Uh, Ikra Ahmad, Leah Tilson, and Mr. Gary Poe. Could you all please come forward? We appreciate your service to our Alumni Association and these valuable leadership roles that you had, and also for providing a voice for our alumni and the current students of ETSU. We're presenting these plaques to you as a token of our gratitude. ICRA leaves the board after serving one year as Student Government Association President. Leah leaves the board after serving one year as Student Association Vice President. And Gary, the elder gentleman up here, currently, <laughs> currently serves as the board's Vice President, and I've learned so much from him. And he's leaving after 17 years of dedicated service to this university and the Alumni Association. Let's give him a big hand. Now, uh, if I could have all the members of the ETSU National Alumni Association Board of Directors that are here with us this evening to please stand. You'll see their pictures in, our, in the program, and we really appreciate all the service that you all have given to us. Come on, Juan. <laughs> Dr. Manahan, will you please come forward now? We're going to begin the introduction of our honorary alumni award and the recipients. And Dr. Nolan and Gary Poe, the chair of our honors committee on the Alumni Association Board, will help present the awards. The following honorees have brought distinction to the university through their inspirational deeds, financial support, shared skills, knowledge, personal time, and energy. It is a pleasure to recognize each of them. Our first honor alumnus is a native of Glad Springs, Virginia, where he was born in his grandparents' home. He holds a BA degree in history and an MBA degree from King College. He joined Eastman in 1991 in the Supply and Distribution Division and was soon appointed as a Community Relations Representative where he is responsible for Eastman's corporate services, 
community relations, and aviation. His dedication to education is truly evident. He served on the board of the Tennessee Board of Regents, East Tennessee State University Foundation, Northeast State Community College Foundation, always giving back to his community. He is currently serving as president of the Kingsport Rotary Club, as well as having served as a member of the Kingsport Regional Planning Commission, president of the Kingsport Board of Education, president of the Kingsport branch of the NAACP, president of the South Kingsport Optimist Club, a Paul Harris Fellow of the Kingsport Rotary Club, president of the Kingsport Chamber of Commerce, and chairman of the Tri-Cities All-American City Partnership. It is my pleasure to present honorary alumnus, Mr. Paul W. Montgomery. Paul. Good evening, Dr. Nolan, General Height, Mr. Poe, Dr. Manahan, ETSU alums, guests. When I was first told that I had been informed that I had been selected to be an honorary guest tonight, I was pleased, humbled, and excited all at the same time. For many years, I've had a connection with ETSU that goes back four decades, from a student to uh, paying tuition for my daughter, <laughs> to working at, on the All-American City Project, where we were able to uh, get all the people in the Tri-Cities area focused on the pharmacy school to bring it here to ETSU. So that was definitely a regional effort. Uh, in thinking about ETSU and pharmacy is a special place for me because I first was on the first inaugural class of selection process as well as today joined in the uh, commencement exercises for the fourth class, a very special place. But what, what I'm most excited about is what's happening at ETSU now. I was involved with the selection of the ninth president. I think we did a pretty good job, don't you? ETSU for the, is began its next 100 years, and I'm sure that there will be a lot of things, accomplishments over the next 100 years, but I'm glad that we're standing at this point in time, and I'm glad that I'm on this part of history. And a thanks to East, Eastman Chemical Company, those at 16 and 17 who are here tonight and with me, thank you for your support. Uh, Teresa, Etta, thanks a lot for the encouragement along the way. And most importantly, to my family, Jerry, Kristen, and Curtis, thank you for the support. A lot of long hours away from home, but I tell you, service is great. So thank you again for this recognition, and I'm very forever grateful for this time. Thank you very much. Our next honorary award grew up in the mountainous area of Sevier County. He has taken his love for his hometown to be his profession. He graduated from Sevier County High School. He went on to attend the University of Tennessee and earned a degree in business administration in 1974. Shortly thereafter, he obtained the title of principal within the Sevier County school system. In 1978, he was elected the Sevier County Executive. He continues to serve as Sevier County Executive until 2003, when the title was changed to County Mayor. He is also very passionate about educating our youth. He has served as the past chairman 
and current member of the Board of Carson Newman Board of Trustees, and was also the past chairman and executive of the University of Tennessee Chancellor's Association. He also played a significant role in moving forward the ETSU academic program in Sevier County. As an organizer and founding member of the ETSU Sevier County Health Sciences Partnership, the facility opened its doors to educate Sevier County students earlier this year. It is my pleasure to present Mr. Larry Waters. Larry. Thank you very much. I certainly uh, appreciate this honor and want you to know that uh, from the folks uh, that I brought with me from Sevier County, they said one thing I need to do is that's keep my remarks short. And I'll tell you the other thing, the picture you see up there, if you talk to any of them, they'll tell you that's the same picture I've been using for 35 years in all, <laughs> almost 18 different campaigns, but it's not. I want to say uh, uh, that I am humbled and appreciative of receiving this award from the Alumni Association in East Tennessee State, East Tennessee State University. It is uh, certainly an honor for me, and I want to say that you have two jewels, and you've already mentioned one of them, Dr. Nolan and, and Bob Plummer, my good friend over here, is another one. Those, uh, uh, Bob was in on the ground floor of what happened in Sevier County, and we do appreciate that. I want to say to uh, my friends and family from Sevier County that I thank, uh, uh, and, and other areas, that I thank them for being here and want you to know that whatever success I've had over the years, I attribute it to the support that you all have given me. And finally, I want to say a word about uh, the East Tennessee family, the faculty, the staff that I've worked with. Uh, you couldn't ask for any more dedicated employees any more innovative employees. They came to Sevier County and uh, uh, if something didn't work, they came up with something else. And I want to say that uh, East Tennessee State University is very lucky to have the faculty and staff uh, that you all have, especially in the health sciences because they have the welfare of these children and young people of East Tennessee, not just up here, but all across East Tennessee and the state of Tennessee on their minds. And they're working every day uh, to improve the quality of life of all of us. And I want to thank them for what they've done because without them, it wouldn't have been possible for Sevier County and the cities to participate uh, in this great program they've put together. So thank you again for this award. ETSU National Alumni Association bestows the George L. Carter Award only at times when recipients are identified whose work and exemplary leadership are great enough to match the legacy of George L. Carter, whose vision made ETSU a reality. Carter led the charge to establish the normal school and generously donated the land to build this university. The George L. Carter Award is the highest honor given by the National Alumni Association. We are presenting the Carter Award to a longtime friend of the university. He believes that incorporating more of an arts curriculum in a student's life who is primarily focused on getting a degree in the science or the medical arts will make him or her a more creative and overall more com competent professional than those receiving a science-only based education. Born in Wilson, North Carolina, he began his education in the Wilson Public School System. He later went to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where he received a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry in 1947. After college, he moved to Kingsport, where he accepted a job as a junior research chemist with Eastman Kodak, 
in Eastman Chemical Division in the Research Laboratory Division. With hard work and determination, he moved through multiple steps on the technical ladder to hold to Topps scientific rug as a research fellow in 1982. During this period, his work was directed to finding new ways to use the use of chemistry and improve Eastman's processes for raw materials. This work resulted in him authoring and co-authoring 101 United States patents as well as several foreign-based patents. In 2008, his wife, Mary B. Martin, passed away. This important event in his life cascaded his philanthropic efforts to begin a legacy for the arts at Mary's alma mater. To this end, in memory and honor of Mary as a cha champion for the arts, he established the Mary B. Martin School of the Arts at ETSU in 2009. The annual payout of earnings from the $5 million endowment has been utilized to ensure greater collaboration and coordination among the various ETSU art programs and for initiatives such as the performing arts in music, dance, theater, film, storytelling, and the graphic arts such as painting, photography, and digital media. His forward-looking stewardship and Mary's living legacy for the arts have positioned ETSU to be the regional leader of the broad enhancement of the arts for all people. Last month, he received the Tennessee's highest honor in the arts, the Governor's Art Leadership Award. Tonight, it is my privilege to bestow the George L. Carter Award to Mr. James C. Martin, a true friend and visionary leader for ETSU. Jim, would you come forward? Thank you very much to the Alumni Association. I, uh, I'd rather talk about George L. Carter than me, so I'll, <laughs> I'll talk about him. I got not only this award, but when uh, uh, Dr. Manahan said that I was going to get this award, he gave me a copy of a book, which is a recent biography of George L. Carter. It was written in uh, 2012 by Ned Irwin, who is now, the, if you recall, the uh, archivist for Washington County. The, what is so interesting about this book is that I, like all, most of you people, know that George L. Carter donated the land uh, for ETSU, also a $100,000 kicker to go with it. and. Uh, he also founded the CCNO Railroad, uh, the Clinchfield, and not only that, he owned Carter Coal Company, which was his major source of income. But what amazed me about this book is, I thought I knew a little bit about George L. Carter. I found out I didn't know a darn thing. I mean, that he was just absolutely one of the greatest uh, people to operate in this area that uh, I have ever heard. He had such a wide variety of enterprises. He, he had formed or managed or owned somewhere between 120 and 130 separate companies, most of it which encompassed the Tri-Cities area, Southwest Virginia, 
the coal fields of Kentucky, coal fields of southwest Virginia, but uh, it um, is, he was such a modest type person. In fact, it's a miracle to me that Ned Irwin was able to write this book because Carter, when he died in his will, said he wanted all of his papers burned and his son honored that. He burned all of his papers, and not only that, when his, uh, when his wife died later, the son burned all the scrapbooks and everything. So the only thing that the biography could be written from was a public record. And uh, he did a, Ned Irwin is now, of course, a Washington County archivist. And believe me, he must have worked very hard in order to put this information together. But what, after I read the book and I received this award, I realized the fact that the award meant so much more to me knowing exactly the things he did, how, how fine a person he was. It, uh, it just, uh, I want to thank you again for giving me this award. And thank you for George L. Carter. Thank you. Martin celebrated his 21st birthday. <laughs> this time, Ms. Paula Douglas, a member of the ETSU National Alumni Association, will introduce our distinguished alumnus in public service inductee. The Distinguished Alumni Award is presented to graduates who have brought honor and distinction to the university through their service and achievements. This will be the inaugural presentation for a Distinguished Alumnus in Public Service Award. Tonight we are honoring a man who is known for serving his fellow man and his country in numerous ways. He was born in 1947 in Johnson City, but began his education in North Africa in a one-room French schoolhouse. After moving around the world with his family until his teen years, he was sent home to attend Washington College Academy. After transferring to university school on the campus of ETSU in the early 60s, he graduated in 1965. He then entered ETSU, but after two years of university life, he volunteered to serve in the United States Army, serving in Southeast Asia from 1968 to 1971 intercepting coded messages from the enemy throughout the Vietnamese campaign. During this time, he received the Vietnamese Service Medal with two stars and the Army Commendation Medal for his service. Following his military career, he then returned to ETSU and graduated in 1974 with a BS in Criminal Justice and then from the Atlanta Law School. After law school, he worked for the Federal Bureau of Investigation, but eventually returned to ETSU to begin working as an administrator at ETSU for over 20 years and served as president of the ETSU Staff Senate. In 1990, he won a seat in the Tennessee Senate, becoming the first Democrat elected from the third Senate district in over 130 years. After consulting with Senator Howard Baker and with the help of his friend, Congressman Jimmy Quillen, the senator then, uh, changed political parties in 1995. Now serving as a Republican, he is the longest serving senator for the third senatorial district. Please join me in welcoming the 2013 Distinguished Alumnus in Public Service, Senator Rusty Crowe.
Brian, thank you so much. Uh, boy, what a great crowd. It's good to see all of you. Uh, Dr. Manahan, thank you for your work with the, the foundation and, and advancement. Uh, Bob Plummer, Pauline, thank you so much. And uh, uh, I, I have to say, the general's right. I have never seen so much energy in my life. Uh, Donna, you see it every day. Uh, we actually, Brian and I met in Nashville when he first got the job. And uh, he was supposed to meet with uh, Lieutenant Governor Ramsey. And we spent so much time in my office talking about everything from football to, to academics that uh, uh, we forgot to get him over there, and I'll never hear the last of that. Uh, he's had to make that up to the, to the lieutenant governor. Uh, let me tell you how proud I am of all the recipients tonight. Such a great, uh, great group of, uh, of servants and, and uh, uh, outstanding leaders. Uh, and, and I'm humbled to be a, a part of this, uh, this group. You know, I, uh, I, all of this political life started for me about 23 years ago, back in 1990, um, and uh, I had three good friends that uh, were pretty fair politicians in their own right that uh, got me started and, and put me on the right track. Uh, Governor Ned McWhorter was one. Um, Lieutenant Governor Wilder, John Wilder, and uh, Jimmy Quillen. Uh, all three, most of you in this room knew. I know Brian certainly did. Uh, he spent a lot of time in Nashville with us. I'll never forget uh, Ned McWhorter telling me when I first got elected, he said, Rusty, making government work is a lot like making vegetable soup. He said, you just have to have the right ingredients and you have to stir it and stir it and stir it and pretty soon it'll rise to the top and, and, and you'll get what you want and it'll work. And I'll never forget Lieutenant Governor Wilder saying, Rusty, uh, the state's like a corporation and our products are education, roads, the public safety and, and economic development. And then Jimmy Quillen used to say, you know, uh, the engines that, that grow our communities and, and create progress are our universities and our cities. And so I hope, I hope the, throughout the years, Brian, that I've been able to provide the fuel for those engines, and I hope we can continue to do that. Uh, and I hope I can get some of that energy that you have. Uh, I used to have that energy back when, when I was your age, when I started out. <laughs> And uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of it back. Uh, I talked to Lee Morrow, he's got me lifting weights, and, and uh, we're going to get some of, that, some of that metabolism back. But uh, uh, 23 years ago, uh, things were a lot different than, than they are today. Um, but uh, I think we're, we're getting there, and, and, and this university is going to benefit. I can't, I, I, I'm amazed at what... what Brian Nolan has done in the short time he's been here, the things that he has on the table and on the agenda. Um, as Pauline said, I graduated uh, from university school in 65 on the campus. Graduated from the university, worked here for, t t for 20 years. Uh, my wife, Sarah, uh, graduated from the Quillen College of Medicine. During my tenure at ETSU working, I got to see uh, Mike Smith play football, and I met my wife, Sarah, at the Eastman track meet. I was doing the high jump, and she was doing the broad jump. And, uh, and, and we met Coach Walker at the, at the track meet. Um, and, and my daughter, Sarah, uh, my daughter, Katie, uh, graduated f here with a, a degree in, in biology. And uh, Katie uh, uh, went through the College of Education and is teaching now and just loves it. And my son John spent 12 years on the, uh, the campus uh, going to university school where Jackson's going now, Donna. And so uh, the university has been such a part of our lives. It makes this such a special, special award. And uh, I'm so proud uh, to, to, to receive it. Uh, God bless all of you and uh, go Bucks. I would now like to call Mr. Lawrence Counts, Secretary of the ETSU National Alumni Association, to the podium to present the honors 
uh, awards of honor to our worthy recipients. Our first award of honor recipient is probably one of the fastest we have ever honored. He was born in Longford, Ireland, and is the oldest of nine children. He became the Irish and British schools 1500 meter champion in 1974 and accepted a track scholarship to run for Dave Walker and the famed Irish Brigade at East Tennessee State University. While at ETSU, he became a champion runner and an All-American for the Bucks, setting school records which still stand today for the 1500 meter and the mile. For 10 years, he competed as a professional athlete around the world. He was a two-time Olympian for Ireland in 1980 and 1984. He has run an under four minute mile 89 times, if, that, if you can believe that. He is one of the elite group of men who have run under three minutes and 50 seconds for the mile. After competing as a middle distance runner on the track circuit, he went into business in 1989, setting up a professional sports agency, which manages and endorsements and competitions for many of the world's best track and marathon athletes. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Raymond P. Flynn, our first Award of Honor recipient. When I arrived in uh, Johnson City, almost 39 years ago, I did not think I'd be still living here and uh, much less receiving this, uh, this wonderful award uh, tonight, which I'm truly humbled uh, to receive. I, I was recruited uh, by Dave Walker and uh, joined a, a group of runners known at the time as the Irish Brigade. There were several runners before me that I wanted to follow in their footsteps because I always dreamed about being a great runner. And, uh, Neil Cusack had won the Boston Marathon the year before I came, and Ed Leddy had gone to the Olympics, and I wanted to be part of their team. So I was uh, honored to come to run for Dave. Of course, he turned out to be a pretty tough taskmaster. Uh, I was 17 at the time, and after about four or five months, he called me in his office one day, and he said, now, son, he said, uh, I don't think you're getting the job done like I was expecting of you, so I, I may have to send you home if you don't start running a little quicker. Uh, so it, uh, I think it must have worked because a few months later I, I, I did break the school record, so he, he kept, me, uh, kept me around. I, I'm proud of my time that I spent at ETSU and the wonderful friends that I, that I, uh, that I made here. I think the, uh, the hills of, of East Tennessee and the green, green fields it reminded me of Ireland and the hospitality, wonderful hospitality of the people that live here. I've, I've always felt right at home here. and. Uh, and my wife and I have uh, made our, our home here and raised our family he here, and uh, I've always loved it. And I'd actually like to introduce my family tonight. Uh, my wife, Jan, is here with me, our daughters, Kira and Kate, and my son, Patrick. Uh, you want to just stand for a second? Just, uh, okay, all right. Okay. All right. okay. So in, in closing, I want to say thank you to uh, East Tennessee State University, to the Alumni Association for this wonderful honor uh, that's bestowed uh, on me tonight. Um, I'm proud to be uh, a Buccaneer, and uh, I couldn't be more excited about the, uh, the uh, new leadership at our university and, the, and President Nolan's vision and um, energy and leadership. Um, I was privileged to be part of the... Um, uh, one of the committees of 125, the Athletic uh, Visioning uh, Committee, and I'm delighted to see so many of our recommendations already moving forward at, at such a rapid uh, uh, speed. And I think uh, working alongside our community and our city leaders and our, our, um, our, our whole area, I think it's really what people are looking uh, for uh, in the future with our university. And uh, I think there are great days ahead. Um, I want to also congratulate the other recipients tonight, and uh, thank you very much.
The next award of honor goes to a man who says he is a big fan of all things ETSU. He earned a BS degree majoring in chemistry and biology from East Tennessee State University in 1965. After graduation, a break from school led him to a job interviews and subsequent employment as a chemist at Eastman Chemical Company. While working at Eastman, he did postgraduate studies in business at ETSU. Through 33 years at Eastman in technical service and development, he worked closely with Eastman's sales, marketing, manufacturing, and research divisions. He also provided service, training, and presentations to customers and participated in numerous technical conferences. He was the recipient of several patents and a member of numerous technical organizations, including the American Chemical Society, Society of Plastic Engineers, and Technical Association of Pulp and Paper Industry. In addition, he serves on the ETSU Foundation, and one of his main interests is supporting the Rome Scholars Leadership Program. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Jimmy Ryan. First of all, I'd like to thank the, my support group over here that's come to be with me this evening. And I also want to thank uh, the East Tennessee State University family that I feel very close to. Teaching digital media, simulation, international educational experiences, medicine, public health, business, bluegrass, storytelling, Olympic weight training, all of this and much more going on at East Tennessee State University. I get excited just thinking about it. I get excited thinking about our Steinway School and our future fine arts facility. I get excited thinking about our athletic programs and the Southern Conference potential and the world-renowned gray fossil site. But tonight, I'm excited about being honored by ETSU National Alumni Association. I'm just speechless. So I will close by saying a heartfelt thank you. The next award of honor recipient is a journalist that has covered numerous national stories ranging from the deployment of the 82nd Airborne Division through Grenada to David Kennedy's death in Palm Beach, Florida. In the sports arena, she covered Atlantic Coast Conference football, basketball, she's covered NASCAR and LPGA tournaments. After obtaining her journalism degree from ETSU in 1976, she worked six years, under, six years for United Press International. After leaving UPI, she spent a year as a reporter, writer for the TV show Inside NASCAR. She then joined Griggs Publishing, where she focused on her passion, motorsports. Initially, she was the managing editor for GT Motorsports, but when the sports car racing publication was sold, she was assigned to cover NASCAR's Cup Series. She also worked as a freelance writer for USA Today and Associated Press. Her honoree remained with NASCAR's Winston Cup scene for 18 years, serving as its editor for 10 of those years. In 2004, she joined Penske Racing South as its director of public media relations. Since leaving Penske in 2007, she has worked as a freelance journalist and author. Her latest book on the history of Charlotte Motor Speedway is scheduled for release this month. Please join me in welcoming Award of Honor recipient, Deb Williams. Thank you and good evening. When I first received the telephone call from the East Tennessee State University Alumni Association, 
informing me that I was going to be honored as a recipient of this grand award, I was speechless. And for those of you who knew me when I was a student here, you know that is a miracle in itself. But even though this award is being given to me tonight, it is for all of you an award to those of you who are the coaches, the deans, and the teachers who were here when I was here as a student. For the four years that I was at East Tennessee State, I grew not only academically, I grew as a person, and that is an award to you. I'm very blessed tonight to have here with me my parents, who are in their 90s. Well, Dad will tell you he's a few months away from it, but Mother's there. <laughs> and other people who have been instrumental in my life. I was John Cathy's first student assistant in the SID office, and I'm very thankful that his wife Meryl and son Ward are here tonight. Zeta Smith and O'Neill Shelton, who have been with me and supported me as friends and co-workers since I was 18. And then Suzanne Wise, who brought me back into the university system over at Appalachian State as an instructor of the evolution for Southern Motorsports. To say that I'm a graduate of East Tennessee State University always fills me with pride. And I get a great deal of pride anytime anyone asks me, where did you acquire your degree? This place, just as all of you, are in my heart. And I am very, very grateful to the Alumni Association and for everyone who had a hand in selecting me for this special honor. For in my heart, I will always be a buccaneer. And there's no place like East Tennessee State University. It was my happiest four years of all my years in school. And I always enjoy coming back here. And occasionally, when I come back to cover the Bristol race every August, I always drive through campus and see the students moving into the dorms and go, oh yeah, I remember those days. <laughs> but thank you so very, very much for this wonderful honor, for it will always be special in my heart. And congratulations to the other recipients tonight. Thank you. I will now ask Mr. Jeffrey C. Taylor, President-Elect of the ETSU National Alumni Association, to come forward. I get the uh, honor of introducing the two outstanding alumni this evening. <clears throat> Quite frankly, all the recipients are outstanding, and there's a ton of outstanding alumni in this room tonight. It's like a who's who of ETSU alumni. And very honored to be here among, among you. The task of choosing outstanding alumni is most difficult each year, as you can imagine. We are blessed with so many whom, through their achievement and service, bring pride to their alma mater. We are happy to present two of the, these graduates who have excelled in their careers, as well as their personal achievements. The first outstanding alumnus, earliest memory of ETSU, was her father bringing her to a basketball game in Brooks Gym. She recalls that she was about six years old at the time, and she thought the experience was the biggest and grandest thing she could ever imagine doing. Little did she know how much of her life that she would spend on this campus. All of her degrees are from ETSU. She completed a bachelor's in elementary education, summa cum laude, master's in supervision and administration, a doctorate in administration. She holds both elementary teaching and principalship certifications in Tennessee. As a doctoral student, she had a fellowship in the Office of Graduate Studies and worked part-time in the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs. Her professional career as an elementary school teacher in Unicoi County included teaching kindergarten, first and second grades. Her last position at ETSU was Vice Provost for Enrollment Services and Director of the Roan Scholars Leadership Program. 
She was a tenured associate professor in educational leadership and policy analysis, teaching principalship licensure and higher education administration graduate program courses. She spent five years as a full-time professor in ELPA. During her years at ETSU, she also served as coordinator in the Office of Finance and Administration, assistant to the university president, and dean of admissions. She retired from East Tennessee State, East Tennessee State University after having completed 30 years in Tennessee public education. She is now the executive vice president of the Nicewanger Foundation in Greenville, having served at the foundation since 2007. She is the recipient of the East Tennessee State University Outstanding Staff Award, was selected to receive the Outstanding Freshman Advocate Award from the Freshman Year Experience Program at the University of South Carolina, and she was inducted into the ETSU Clemmer College of Education Alumni Hall of Fame, and she even has a street named in her honor on the ETSU campus. It's a pretty big deal there. Please join me in applauding this outstanding alumnus accomplishments and dedication to ETSU. It is a great pleasure that I present to you outstanding alumna of 2013, Dr. Nancy Lewis Dishner. to tell you the rest of the story. When I retired from ETSU six and a half years ago, Dr. Burt Bach says to me, I want to give you a nice reception. And I said, I don't want a nice reception. I want to take the money you're going to spend on that reception. I don't want the bathrooms renovated on the first floor of Dawson Hall because they're not fit for families to see when they come in for campus tours. <laughs> so I have a plaque hanging in my home that tells me that the bathrooms on the first floor of Dawson Hall have been named in my honor. <laughs> so, Bert, the president's getting ready to trump you with his plaque in a minute. I just want you to know that. <clears throat> Forty years ago, this very month, I was standing in the hall of Unicoi County High School, a very broken teenager with my head against a brick wall. And a very special teacher in my life was standing in front of me, saying to me, Nancy, I always thought you were going to amount to something, and now I know you're never going to be anything, and I want you to know how disappointed I am in you. Now, I was sitting there just a moment ago when that story, I was reminded of that story, and I thought, she's the one I should have invited to dinner this evening. <laughs> Seriously, her words were well-spoken, and they were exactly on target. What I've tried to figure out is what propelled me from that hall at Unicoi County High School 40 years ago to this podium tonight, and that's the important thing, and I think it was three things. It's the people I've had in my life. It's East Tennessee State University, and most especially, it is God that took those things and put them all in the right order. It started with my dad, who took that broken teenager aside and said, just do one thing for me. Go to ETSU and take one class. That's all I ask. And to fulfill his dying wish, I wound up in the history class of Colin Baxter. And I fell in love for the first time in my life. Not with Colin, although I, although I will tell you, that English accent did turn me on. <laughs> but I fell in love with learning. And then Dr. Ronnie Day's class in European history, I took every one he offered. And my sweet husband, who is my biggest fan on the face of the earth, Harold Dishner, is still paying for that European history course. When Harold asked me to marry him, I didn't say yes. I answered with a question. Where are we going on the honeymoon? <laughs> because I had learned at ETSU that the world didn't drop off the edge and the dragons weren't at the end of the Washington County line. 
that there was something bigger in this world and I wanted to know about it and I wanted to experience it. And I learned that right here. And then in my master's and my doctoral work, I had folks like Charles Burkett and Floyd Edwards who taught me what it was a leader was supposed to do. And then Dr. Richard Manahan offered me my first administrative position here at ETSU. He must have figured out I wasn't a total waste. And he allowed me the opportunity to begin to use that leadership skill. And then I got it honed under the guidance of folks like Roy Nix and Tom Garland and Burt Bach and Louis Gump, who I worked with with the Rhone Scholars Program, who taught me what a leader was supposed to do and what it was all about. And then I retired and I thought, surely God's taught me all the lessons I'm supposed to know. But he wasn't finished with me yet. He introduced me to Scott and Nikki Nicewanger and the opportunity to work at the Nicewanger Foundation. And until that time, I thought I was a giving person. But Scott has taught me in the last six and a half years that it's not about giving, it's about giving back everything you have. And I'm, that's the lesson I'm still learning where I am now. So I'll leave you with two thoughts this evening. And the first one is, Tomorrow and the next day and the day following, I promise you, if you'll just look around, you are going to find a person just like that broken teenager who's going to walk through your life. And I ask you to please take the time and effort to give them the guidance and the direction and the encouragement and the support that I received from those people I just named to you and get them back on track and make a difference in their lives. And that's what we all need to do every single day. And the second thing I want us all to remember is that we would not be sitting here tonight if we didn't love this institution. But my question to all of us is, what have we done for it lately? Every time we're called to serve on a committee, write a check for a scholarship, mentor a student, but by all means, every time we speak of this institution in a public setting, it needs to be a voice of support for what it does because that will encourage another young lady like me to come and take that first class here and make a difference in their life. My promise to you is that I will live from this day forward to try to someday be worthy of the award you're providing me tonight. Thank you. If you are an Atlanta Falcons football fan, <clears throat> if you're an NFL football fan, or if you're a sports fan that even has a pulse, <laughs> you're certainly going to know our outstanding alumnus of 2013. A native of Daytona Beach, Florida, he was born on June 13, 1959 in Chicago, Illinois. He played college football here at ETSU from 1977 to 1981. He was named defensive MVP twice at his position. He also led the team with a school record 186 tackles as a senior. He graduated in 1982 with a business management degree, but his future would be in the business of coaching great football. He boasts a strong coaching background that includes 12 NFL seasons and 29 total years in football. His defensive track record has witnessed a remarkable amount of success as he helped the Baltimore Ravens to a Super Bowl 35 championship in 2000 as a defensive assistant coach. And he led the Jacksonville Jaguars defense 
to top 10 rankings in several categories during his time as the club's defensive coordinator. In 2008, he joined the Atlanta Falcons organization for his rookie season as head coach. Under his determined leadership, the Falcons enjoyed one of the biggest turnarounds the NFL has ever witnessed. In fact, only three rookie head coaches in NFL history had more wins in their first campaign on the sidelines than he did. In the five seasons as the Falcons head coach, the team has compiled a 56 and 24 regular season record, which is second best in the NFL during that time, and his team's captured two NFC South division titles. His accomplishments during his tenure as Atlanta Falcons head coach thus far are unprecedented in team history and are among the best in the NFL when measured against coaching counterparts. He became the first coach in franchise history to produce back-to-back -back winning seasons in 2008 and 2009, and in 2011, he became the first coach in team history to lead his team to consecutive playoff appearances. If you ask Atlanta Falcons fans and ETSU fans, they'll tell you, with this coach, you ain't seen nothing yet, baby. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to present to you the Outstanding Alumni Award to Coach Mike Smith. Uh, thank you uh, very much for that kind uh, introduction. Uh, Coaching, coaching football is a passion of mine, and it's something that uh, I've been very fortunate to do. And I know that uh, we, we talk about records and all that, and really the records are not one person's records. It starts really first and foremost with your, with your family, and I know we're all families and we're all proud of our, our families. But the second most influential thing that you've, ever are going to have in your life is the university family that uh, you go. And uh, I can't say enough about my time here at East Tennessee State University. The mentors that I had that didn't even know that they, that they were my mentors. The friends that I had that didn't know things that they would say or things that I've used the last 28 years, 29 years in coaching. Uh, the success of everybody in this room, it's an individual success, but really it's a, it's a team success. And the team that we're talking about is East Tennessee State University. And it's hard to come up here after these uh, award winners that have been honored tonight because they've said about everything that I would like to say and more. And uh, I want to tell them congratulations for their awards. And I want to tell you, we've got a great guy at the helm right now in Dr. Brian Nolan. Not just because the, the football's coming back, because of his vision <laughs> and the shared vision of the people in charge here at East Tennessee State University across the board. It's just not about athletics. It's about developing young people into leaders. And I spent five wonderful years here at East Tennessee. I lived and learned a lot. Some good lessons, some tough lessons. But I am so thankful that East Tennessee State is the place that I came to go to school. Uh, the community is unbelievable. And what I mean by the community, not just the campus, East Tennessee. I came from the beaches of, of Daytona Beach and came up here and the first day in January of 77 on my official visit, I knew this is the place I wanted to be. And the people that have lived here a long time, I can understand why you've never left. East Tennessee is a wonderful, wonderful place. And I am honored and I am truly humbled uh, of any award I've ever received this is probably the one that's most special to me. Uh, I can't thank the people, my friends that are here tonight, and I want to 
close with one, one thing because I've never really had an opportunity to say this to him. Jerry Robertson, you were a mentor of mine. Every day that we would come, players, we would see Coach Robertson, and he had this single-mindedness, behind-the-scenes work, but he was probably the most valuable person on that football team. And Coach Robertson, I want to thank you for all that I've learned watching you as, as a man and how you interact with people. Thank you, very, thank you very much. And in closing, I want to say this is a great university, and we have a great leader, and it's been wonderful. Did you know some of those things I didn't know? But I know with this guy leading us, there's going to be even bigger and better did you knows in years to come. God bless you, and thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to call our fearless leader, and I truly mean fearless, uh, Lieutenant General Ron Hyde back to the podium for the conclusion of our program. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, before you leave the campus this weekend, if you have an opportunity, I invite you all to visit the Illumini Gallery, which is in the first floor of the DP Cult. Uh, building and you will see pictures of our past award recipients the history of that and it's a beautiful display of those who have provided so much support to the university over the years I have been honored to serve as president of this association for the past three years as my service uh, as president comes to an end it's my duty now to pass the gavel to an individual with great vision, great dedication, devotion to this university, and who I know will just do an outstanding job during his tenure. I introduce you to the next president of the ETSU Alumni Association, Mr. Jeff Taylor, and his wife Ashley is with us also. Not quite yet, you can't get away. General, it's been my distinct pleasure and honor to serve on the Alumni Association Board with you for the past three years under your leadership. And I know the other folks on the board think the same of you, and, uh, but you're not going away too far. Uh, you're gonna help us as past president as well. And in appreciation for your hard work and service to the ETSU National Alumni Association, uh, please accept this forthcoming plaque Our appreciation. Thank you. I'd be remiss without taking one minute to, to say a couple of words since I've been associated with this institution for so many years uh, to recognize some people that have just made this job a wonderful uh, position to, to have over the past three years and being a member of the board for so many years. First, uh, Dr. Dick Manahan and Bob Plummer in the Office of Advancement and Alumni Relations and their great staff, uh, Leanne Davis, Lisa Harvey, uh, Cindy Ramsey. I tell you, in the military we talk about doing more with less all the time. These folks do more with less all the time, and certainly I appreciate that. Um, also in the foundation, uh, Roger Kennedy, who couldn't be here this evening, and Pat Holland, who keeps everybody straight. Uh, and on the narrow. Uh, I'd be remiss also without thanking Dr. Stanton and Nancy 
uh, for their support during my tenure, and also uh, Dr. Nolan and Donna uh, in your past year. We really appreciate that. And just a few other folks that uh, I was born and raised out in the country here, at, out in Washington County on a farm. And I come across a lot of prospective students and students that are already here. And you can imagine I get a lot of questions and a lot of problems. And each time I have brought that problem to the university staff, they have been more than helpful in jumping in and solving that problem. Uh, Dr. Bach, uh, Dr. Stanton, I mean just everybody jumped in to help us uh, resolve those problems. And, and what that means is that we have changed young people's lives. People that were going astray and we got them back in and kept them moving. That's happened several times and for that I really appreciate that. And, and lastly, uh, we commissioned nine new second lieutenants in the U.S. Army this morning. And I will tell you, Dr. Garceau, uh, those cadets love you. Thank you so much for what you do in the military science department. They work under her, and she just, they love her to death, so thank you so much. Thank you all, and thank you again for coming tonight. A wonderful evening. In keeping with the long-standing tradition associated with this annual awards program, we will now sing the ETSU alma mater to close our program. We would like to call on retired University Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Dorman Stout, a member of the class of 1952, to lead us in the singing. He will be accompanied by Dr. Rush. You'll find the words on the back cover of your printed program. Thank you for being with us this evening, and please have a safe journey home. Stand as we sing with enthusiasm, both stanzas. In the shadow of the mountains, under skies of blue, stands our dear alma mater, glorious to view. Sound the chorus, speed it onward, thee will never fail. Hail to thee, our alma mater, hail to thee, all hail. In thy halls we formed our friendships, Dear old college home, and to thee we pledge our hearts wherever we may roam. Sound the chorus, speed it onward, thee will never fail. Hail to thee, our alma mater, hail to thee, all hail. Thank you.